last video, the next logical step for me anyways, is gonna be to get this prop repaired. Some of the leading edges on the props are damaged. Um, some of the paint's wearing off of them. Some of the tips are starting to fray. So this is a safety issue that I definitely wanna address. Uh, it's even something that maybe I could attempt on my own. I've seen people with carbon fiber videos and how to do repair. I, I don't wanna touch it. So this is something, it's a safety factor for me. I want a pro to do it. And I'm gonna send this off to Warp Drive to have them refurbish the props. So this video is gonna go through, this is me uh, starting the process and then I'll record it when it comes back and I'll give you kind of an experience of uh, getting these things fixed. So the first thing that I wanted to do before I just unbolted these and chipped them off is I wanna have a better understanding of what the pitch is of these uh, when I got it. I don't know what the proper pitch is. I'm going to look into the forums and see if there's information there. I'll ask questions to experienced air boaters. The other thing that I'll do is I'll check with Warp Drive um, and see what they recommend if they have any recommendations for air boats. So the best way that I can figure out how to do that is to measure the angle of this base plate and then measure the difference between uh, this and the tip of the prop. So the best way that I know to measure that is to use this angle finder. It's a Johnson angle finder. And I wanted to position it on this base plate. You gotta be a little bit careful. There's some washers here that you can kind of get off kilter there. But I've got this to where the angle of this is at zero degrees. You can lower and raise the front of the boat. And then you can measure the tip of the prop. All right, so what I found is when I have this basically at zero degrees, um, it was a little tough because on some of the blades there's some damage near the tip and I was unable to properly seat this angle finder. What I did do is measure it in two different spots. Here, just right when it starts to get flat, um, I did my best to put it in the same position. It was right at 25, 26 degrees. And out here it was roughly 10. Generally speaking, it was within a degree or two these things aren't extremely accurate. I almost wish I had a uh, digital uh, level at this point. So what I think I'm going to do is kind of leave all this base plate assembly alone and just kind of try to take each individual blade out. I don't know why, uh, but let's just try that out. So you actually can't get the blades all the way out because the bolts are captive here. So take the whole thing off, then pull them apart. But just taking a look at these this one is probably the worst. Got the, uh, the nickel leading edge is all frayed. The tip, which I believe was uh, square at one point, is no longer square, it's delaminating. So I believe what they do is they're gonna have to kind of cut back to good material. And when they do that, then all the other blades will have to be cut at the same length. So let's give you a rundown of blade number one. Here's number two, couple nicks there. Couple nicks in the leading edge. This one has pretty rough in the leading edge there. Nick or two there, some paint. That one's not too bad. And then here's the last one. It's not very exciting to watch me loosen bolts, so I just put it up on here just to show you what I did. Um, put it up on the garbage can. I started out on the stool, put it up on the garbage can that allowed me to kind of get up underneath there a little bit easier. Once you get all of them loose, um, then they'll they'll start to loosen up a little bit, obviously, the blades. But then I started getting a little bit concerned about this falling, so what I'm going to do is take this down to the floor, uh, put it on a towel. Probably should use a bigger towel than that, but I think it'll be okay. And just slowly start slipping these out as I loosen them up. So you can see uh, a little bit of corrosion on the bolts. These are the bolts that held in each individual blade into the hub. Definitely time to replace. All right, they're all off. This might be a little bit easier to see the condition. It's all five blades. Here's the, uh, I guess the hub. It's in decent shape structurally, but it's in, uh, it's got some corrosion. So 
Not really sure what I'm going to do with that yet. Here's the, uh, I guess that would be the outer plate. And these are spacers. This is what it looks like in between there, the hubs. Or the part that holds the blade on. So you can see some corrosion in there. There's the other one. So definitely a good opportunity to clean all this up while I have it off. So, all right, so I need to get these boxed off, get them off to warp drive. I will keep you posted on how that goes, but just wanted to let you know what it all looked like uh, when you take it apart. All right, today is like Christmas day for me. Earlier today, I received two boxes from UPS from warp drive. Why did I get two boxes? I'll get to that in one minute. All right, so before I pull these out, let's just take a look at what they look like when I sent them in. Now, clearly they were in extremely rough shape. I mean, quite honestly, I thought that they would be calling me back to say that these blades are beyond repair, that they're a lost cause. But one of the things that um, I've learned through this process is that this is a like a typical item that requires maintenance. Um, I believe that they sat out in the weather for the longest time and that there was, um, you know, significant weathering to the paint, that sort of thing, and maybe even used quite a bit with no paint or no kind of exterior protection. Um, just like anything else, they can wear out, they can uh, start to break down, things like that. And part of the problem that we had here is I believe that, you know, these things leak oil quite a bit these uh, older GPU units. So there's a lot of opportunity for oil to hit parts of the boat and of course the prop. So I believe what happened here is some of the oil got into the actual carbon fiber and made it a little bit difficult to refinish. So with that said, um, let's talk about it a little bit. I'll show you what it looks like. So real quick, I you know, if you're sitting years back, I struggled with how to kind of box them up. Um, basically, it was a small flat box, and they're just simply wrapped in brown paper um, and then just stacked uh, together. Um, I think one of the things that's important is that there's no, it's not loose inside and they're hitting around. But um, so very well packaged, sent back to me. And so there we go. I mean, if you go back to the picture of what it looked like before, I mean, this is fantastic. So as I mentioned before, it appears that some of the oil from the boat got impregnated into the, the raw carbon fibers. Uh, they basically cleaned this as much multiple times with acetone uh, before they repainted it. Um, but, you know, for what this is, I mean, this looks just, I mean, to me, beautiful. It's not perfect, doesn't look brand new, but that's not what I was after. Um, now... These were shortened a little bit, so um, I think you noticed in some of the uh, the pictures before, the ends were frayed, right? So the way they fix that is actually trim it till you get back to some good material, and then you, you know, properly finish it from there. Um, but these are painted. I mean, the leading edge is just fantastic. Uh, each one of them were trimmed, and they were balanced. Uh, these were very old and did not have a serial number, I don't believe, or they're ground off or something, but um, so there's serial numbers on there. I mean, you know, it just looks fantastic. So these are ready to go on the boat. These are, they started out a 72 inch prop and these are now just under 71 inches. You know, after talking to them um, regarding these specific props, you know, there are some things that you really need to do uh, to take care of it. So, so you need to be mindful of the finish. These are actually um, designed such that you can just hit them with some black lacquer paint and will protect the carbon fiber inside. So don't let them get too far gone to where you start to have issues inside. Like These are very expensive. Uh, they're very expensive to replace. They're very expensive to repair. Um, and they're However, if you run something like this for multiple, you know, a decade, and you have to refurbish them, you're gonna get another decade out of them as well. Now, going through this process, I learned a little bit about, um, about the cage. So one of the things, I mean, obviously you wanna keep things away from the prop that's spinning very fast. 
Um, oftentimes you're in the swamp, you've got sticks and things going through your cage. So because of the damage that these props received, I'm more inclined to put a little bit of tighter weave, if you will, or tighter grid spacing um, on the cage when I fix that. So yeah, anyways, takeaway is I'm extremely happy. These are a little bit shorter. They're right at 71 inches. Uh, so I lost a little bit of prop. You can gain back uh, the same bite by just adjusting the pitch. But the overall experience of getting them refurbished, you to me, I'm just, I'm just ecstatic with it. Now, all that being said, I am very happy with these. They're fine. They're probably going to be the prettiest thing on the boat when we're done. But I went ahead... Took one for the channel and bought a new set. So I was a little unsure how these were going to come out. Let's see if I can give you a better view. All right, maybe that's better. So I definitely was concerned about losing some length of the prop. I have zero idea or clue if it's really going to make a difference or not. But I just feel that I want to wring out every single bit of performance out of this boat. So the back one is the new one. This one, closest one, is the refurbished one. There you go. That's a better view. So you can see here the difference between the brand new one and the refurbished one. All right, so like I mentioned before, I went ahead and opted for new blades. Did I need to? No, absolutely not. These are fine. A little shorter than what I started out with, but they're absolutely fine. Um, at the time I did, I was concerned about losing some length in the blades, and that's why I opted for new blades. Now, in addition, Some other items as well. Some new clamping blocks and new hardware. I believe that's grade eight. But the hardware that came off of those blades were definitely in need of replacement. So it's a safety issue. Replace your hardware. Uh, it's very cheap insurance. So I will do that. I'm going to go ahead and um, powder coat the hub assembly get that looking good and get this thing back on the boat. Pretty cool, you can see, uh, there you go. See the serial numbers there, also written there. So there you go, I'm very excited to get these back. It's kind of a nice new part for the boat. It's definitely given me a shot in the arm to want to get this boat finished. So I'm not actually ready to mount these yet, but I figured, be nice just for where we're at in the project to go ahead and mount them so we can see what they look like on the boat. I just realized I haven't shown you a video of all five of them together. So here we go. So basically a few takeaways for you. Number one, uh, don't feel that your props are too far gone to have them repaired. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but uh, go ahead and send them to the manufacturer. Um, in this case, it was warp drive. Um, and just see, see what they say. Uh, typically, they will shoot you straight on what they can do, um, how they can fix them, and how they're going to turn out. That was my experience. And number two, let this be a lesson to you to make sure that you take care of your props, your blades, whatever. So I almost forgot to tell you that I also picked up a protractor from warp drive. And this is the proper tool to set the pitch for your blades. Earlier in the video, I was using a cheap level. It was hard to get a really good consistent reading of the blades that I was taking off. Now, I really didn't have to measure those blades. I was just curious uh, what they were before I took them off. But what you can use this tool for, you can see that there's indicator marks on the top. Up there from zero, looks like to 60 degrees, either way. 
And you could use this to measure the level of your plate, the base plate of the propeller, and then get the difference from that to your blades. So I will go over this more when I actually use it, but basically you'd want to set this to whatever pitch you want to do. Let's just say it's 17 degrees, 15 degrees, whatever. You lock it in with this knob. You lock it in with this knob and it holds it. And then you can mount this to your blade there. Okay. There's instructions that come with it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. All right, there she is all mounted up. I don't have any of the hardware really tightened up appropriately. I've only got a couple bolts holding each blade in. But I at least wanted to get it mounted, show you what it looks like on the boat. Um, obviously the cage is off. I'm starting to work on that. So um, yeah, so very, very happy with how it all turned out. I've never driven this boat, so I have no understanding or experience of how it performed with the full length blades. Uh, again, these are roughly an inch shorter uh, due to the repair. Um, so it's my hope that it should be absolutely fine. Throw a little more pitch into it, and I think it will be fine. I probably will never know the difference. Um, I don't need it to go extremely fast or anything. I just want it to be responsive and not get stuck as much. So there you go, hopefully this helped. I'm gonna take all this back off. This was just for this video to wrap this up. And the motor is coming off, the rigging's coming off, and the boat's gonna be flipped over and repainted. So before I go, just wanted to say that I do plan on pulling the motor off. Um, at minimum, I'm going to repaint it, wire brush it, repaint it. Um, and at maximum, I may pull these cylinders off. So let me know below what you want to see. Do you want me to see me pull the cylinders off? If you remember, uh, some of you may remember that there was a lot of water in the motor for many years. So um, some are basically saying that forget it, send it, just keep changing the oil or putting oil in it, you'll be fine. It's going to smoke a little bit. Um, others are suggesting to uh, kind of take it apart. Uh, there are parts of me that want to take it apart, clean it, make it look nice, uh, but there are concerns that the more I dig into it, the more reasons I find not to put it back together. So anyways, let me know what you want to see. Um, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks for watching.